Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to talk about the Ramanujan Fellowships and these are essentially fellowships constituted by the Indian government to attract people from around the world and one of the things about this fellowship is that not only PhD people can apply but also those who have master's degree in any field of engineering or science and also if you have completed a medical doctorate you can also apply for this fellowship now one of the aims which is specified for this fellowship is to reverse the brain drain phenomena so you know that is the phenomena of people migrating from developing countries to developed countries in search of better salaries and jobs but one of the problems with this kind of migration is that a lot of skills lot of talent is actually lost and this may be required by the developing country so this particular fellowship helps you with that and also if you are a person doing his master's degree maybe you have finished your phd and you want to go back to your home country and this is specifically for indian people then this is a good fellowship to take advantage of now it explicitly states that you want to be a brilliant indian scientist or engineer so again the word brilliant is being used here in the form where it is used in britain for example to mean people who have essentially good academic records and so on so it's basically for people who are outside of india so keep that in mind and you can take up scientist engineer research jobs in any indian institution so these may be research labs, they may be universities and so on. Now there are certain requirements for this particular fellowship so we are going to go into detail with that. I'm going to make five different points on this video so do stay till the end for maximum benefit. So now you have to be a STEM PhD or master's degree person like I mentioned before STEM is science, technology, engineering and math and you want to be somebody who wants to return to India from abroad. Now this fellowship is very scientific specific or rather scientist specific and very selective. So that's something to keep in mind. And you can work in any scientific institution and university in the country. Now not only you can work there, you will get a salary there. You can also apply for any funded projects out there from the different institutions in the country so this is another advantage of this you can basically be like a faculty person and you can apply to the different science and technology agents of the government now one of the things i will of course say that if you are somebody who is planning to do multidisciplinary work in science and technology this would be a good fellowship to get into now let us look at the different specifics you need to get to avail of this fellowship. Now the number one thing is that you need to be nominated by the head of the organization or institute where you want to work. So this is typically the director of this institution. Now what is most likely to happen is that you are going to first touch base with a professor or a scientist working in this institution and you can craft up a proposal with this particular person. Now if you get this person then this person is going to make sure that your final proposal is actually submitted through the director so the way this works in most indian government organization is that you interact with the professor you write up the proposal the professor then sends this thing to the director through the department chairman and then the director is going to approve of this so it's going to be much easier if you actually contact a professor in a department rather than approach the director directly because the director may be a person working in a very different field compared to your field remember science and technology is very broad so you may be somebody who is for example working in mechanical engineering or you may be in computer science and the director may be a biological sciences person so this is often the case now once you get this nomination you have to send your proposal to the requisite government department so i'm going to give you the details here in the description box so essentially the organization which deals with this is the SERB so you have to go to SERB.gov.in now the number two point which is mentioned is that you should not work with your own PhD supervisor or from the institution where you did your PhD so if you are somebody who has done your PhD or master's degree from a particular institute within India then you should apply to a different institute so this is going to make the case somewhat more difficult because you are going to have to 
find some newer faculty, some newer scientists to host your visit. But it's also going to benefit you because what happens is that you learn enough from one person and then you need to move on in search for a newer person to learn more from him or her. So this is actually meant for the benefit of the student concern. Now the number three thing is that you should be less than 45 years of age. You should have a PhD degree in a STEM discipline or a Master of Engineering or Technology discipline. And you can also have an MD in medicine. Now one of the things which you need to show is that you have a decent amount of professional experience and expertise and you are also reasonably well reputed in your field. So here again reputation is measured by your publication. So I would expect that you should have publications in good journal, you can have recognition, you need to have a proven track record. So again if you are in this business of research then you know that you have to build your CV over a long time. So any prizes you have got in the past, any good GPA you have got, all this is beneficial. If you have got any prizes related to your thesis, for example, or related to your research presentations in some conference, that is also going to be very useful here. So remember the way selection committees make decision is that they look at the background. They also look at any prior awards or prizes the person has obtained to make sure that this person is going to be a good bet here. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, the PhD guide of the candidate cannot actually recommend you. So this is something you need to keep in mind. You have to deviate yourself from your prior PhD guide if you happen to have got this PhD from an Indian institution. Now, the fifth issue has to do with the duration, money and so on. So again, this project Ramanujan Fellowship is for a five year duration. And essentially you get a stipend somewhere near 1.5 lakh rupees per month. So it's a pretty decent stipend, but this actually includes an HRA component. So do keep that in mind if you are living in some expensive cities such as Mumbai and Delhi. If you do not get places in the university itself, maybe in the guest houses or in some faculty place, then you may have to actually rent an apartment which may be quite expensive. So again, keep some of these things in mind about the cost. This is more of a stipend, but it is a reasonably good amount. Also remember that this amount you are getting is going to be taxable in the hands of the Indian government. So unfortunately, some of this money is going to go away as tax. Now, beside this stipend which you get, you get 7 lakhs per year. This is for your research and also your host institute will get 60,000 rupees per year to do all the different activities they have to do to support you. So this is essentially to pay for the different expenses out there. You can also go for one international travel per year. So this is certainly a very useful component of this fellowship because if you are returning from abroad, you may need to go to certain conferences so that you can keep your network going. Remember that for many people, network is very important because especially if you are a PhD person, you want to write papers then you know that having a good network is certainly going to help you in getting your papers accepted and you also want to get newer ideas from these foreign visits which you make to good conferences. Now let's come to the fifth point which is probably the most important and this is that you need to write a research proposal and this research proposal like I mentioned before is best written with a professor or scientist working in that institution. So make sure you get hold of a good scientist who is of course very much in favor of doing research with you. If you find somebody who is like this, he is going to reply to you. And of course there may be incidences where people may not reply to you. So don't be disheartened by this. Just move on to a different scientist, different institution. Remember there are many institutions out there. There are many scientists out there. And if you send a sufficient number of emails, you will find some response. Now most of the universities, most of the departments will have a web page where they will have the profile of the different faculty and also the emails. And you can also search Google Scholar to figure out about who are the different professors working in your field, who are the different scientists working in your field and so on. Now don't get very perturbed if you do not have a PhD because if you look at various national labs out there, you will find that most of the people working in the national labs actually don't have PhDs. Even there are directors of labs who may not have PhDs. So there is a lot of applied research which can be done by people with master's degree. And that is what is being done in many of the research labs actually nowadays. So 
do not be very perturbed by the fact that you do not have a PhD. So if you are somebody who has done a master's degree abroad and is not getting a good job, then consider applying for the Ramanujan Fellowship. Though I should tell you that it's not going to be very easy. The selection rate is probably pretty tough. But of course, there is no cost to you in applying. So you can probably do that. Now, one of the things I have found from my experience in the past that if you do not get a fellowship like this also, the particular proposal you write, the contact you build with the professor is all useful to you somewhere else. So very often what happens is that this proposal stays with you. Maybe down the road you can use it somewhere else. Anything you write with a great degree of work and detail, what happens is that it stays in your mind and it's going to help you further. So these are some aspects about the Ramanujan Fellowship. So the government of India is making some effort to actually get some of the students back. Remember, there are an enormous number of Indian students studying outside the country. And many of these guys are not going to be able to get jobs also because of the difficult visa situation. So suddenly this is one way to get back to your home country while you are able to actually have a job. So it's also possible that you work for a few years in this fellowship, you complete all the five years and you are going to be absorbed in that particular institution. And if you are not absorbed in that particular institution, maybe you didn't get along well with your seniors or with the director, you can still get absorbed in a different institution out there. And the third possibility is if even that doesn't happen, you may get a job somewhere else, maybe in the private sector, you may get a job in some foreign country again. So all these things are possible. Actually, nowadays there is nothing like brain drain. It is always brain circulation.